She's won a Premier League, a Champions League, FA Cup, League Cup, Club World Cup, UEFA Super Cup, Community Shield, and uh, was the 2020 Premier League Young Player of the season. So, Ali McCoist, uh, we call him a generational talent. Do you think that's accurate? Um, certainly going forward, yeah. I, I, I just think sometimes we as a nation tend to, <laughs> tend to look on the negatives and what people can't do. It's a very than, British thing, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it is. It really is a very British thing. Not only do we like to build people up and then shoot them down, but we like to talk about their deficiencies rather than their qualities a little bit, you know. Um, do you think that's insecurity on our own part? It might be. It might be. The one thing that he's handled well is this relatively new thing that uh, has been brought into the game, particularly by Pep, and it's kind of, if you like, inverted fullbacks where they move forward into the, into the middle of the park. Um and Trent's perfect for that. I mean, City have done it brilliantly. First one that did it was Cancelo. Um, I, I saw him do it. Goodish and brilliant. John Stones looks as though he can do it from the centre back position. I mean, the right back position. But anyway, it's almost perfect for Trent um, because I mentioned again. You know, in, in terms of his qualities moving forward, his passing, his delivery, his finishing, his set plays, absolutely top class. Absolutely top class. And I hear what Danny says about taking chances and taking risks. Certainly don't mind doing that because people make you know stats can lie you know for example probably Lionel Messi um, would would give the ball away more than most people uh, in a game but the fact of the matter is he's trying things more than everybody else in the game so you know it's it's almost common sense that he will give the ball away as well so I'm not sure comparing. Lionel Messi with Trent Alexander of course but I'm just saying when he does get forward he tries things he puts deliveries into the box He'll, you know from a striker's point of view excellent the question mark is you know defensively you know he, he, he's not he's not got the same qualities he's, he's, he's not a international class I think defensively but moving forward he's actually he more than makes up for that absolutely mm. Um, let's move on because we want to talk about Gary Neville a little bit. Caused a bit of a stir. Monday Night Football, of course, was last night. Um, and it looked as if he was trying his best to rub a bit of salt in the wounds of Arsenal no. fans. So he accused them Gary. of <laughs> over-celebrating too many wins this season, being too emotional in their pursuit of the first title since 2004. Called out Zinchenko in particular for tooting his car horn and shouting, come on, at Adoran Gunas. That was following the 19th of March 4-1 win at home to Palace. So um, my immediate uh, comparison for this one, I think, is... Do you remember when Casemiro came in and he was celebrating with the fans <laughs> and the fans absolutely loved it because they were like, do. passion, every little thing matters. Surely that is actually what football is about. We've had this conversation so many times, haven't we, about over-celebrating, whatever. I, I kind of get a little bit bored of it because I just think you are uh, celebrating the moments, right? Celebrating it. And if you think you're on track as well, you don't know where you're going to end anyway. So why would you not celebrate in that moment in particular? Um, it's tough, isn't it, with things like this? Because I think you can just, you can really twist most things any different way, Ali, that you really want to. So you could sort of say, well, if they're celebrating, it's really arrogant. But if they're not celebrating, is it arrogant because they just assumed to win that game? You know what I mean? Like I think I know you can I kind stand of on it. level things in all sorts of different ways if you really want to. Do not have a problem at all with people's. I'd far rather teams over celebrated than under celebrated. It's an entertainment business that we're in, right? And there has to be a relationship between supporters and players. And that is one of the things that supporters love it myself we love seeing our own team celebrate because it shows you they care it shows you that that they have the same passion as you do yeah sometimes you go over the top so what big deal and uh, you know if, 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 if it rubs i tell you, what you you probably you probably will never get you'll never get a, a supporter saying that his team over celebrated. You'll always got opposition fans saying that teams over celebrate. This is the thing. I don't have a problem with it. I think it's good for the game. I think it, it strengthens a, a, a poor relationship generally between players and supporters. Talk Sport Breakfast with Laura Woods. Monday to Wednesday morning, 6 till 10. On AM, on DAB, via the Talk Sport app, and on your smart speaker. Talk Sport.